January camp information for everybody. It's going to be taking place from January the 19th through the 28th. It's going to be taking place in Austin, Texas. It is going to be the first United States Women's National Team action of 2022, although this is not a camp that's going to feature any international matches. So this is a little bit of a, a pre-camp before the camp that probably happens around She Believes Cup, which is going to be taking place on February uh, 17th all the way through, I believe, to the 20. Third, so uh, it's going to be uh, just sort of inter like intermittent sort of kind of uh, squads going against each other. Not a lot of uh, things that are going to be uh, visible in terms of like those scrimmages being broadcast or anything like that. It's just going to be, I guess, what we hear all the time: very highly competitive environments, and uh, probably with a 26-person roster, uh, probably two groups sort of going at it uh, from you know day in and day out. But uh, let's take a look at uh, this uh, initial roster, breaking it down with goalkeepers, defenders, and midfielders, and forwards uh we're gonna go ahead and give all the initial rosters and then the updates that took place uh for goalkeepers it is three it's aubrey kingsbury formerly bledsoe washington spirit casey murphy north carolina courage and Alyssa nair chicago red stars for the defending core it's alana cook Paul Rain, Abby Dahl Camper of San Diego Wave FC, Turner Davidson, Chicago Red Stars, Amani Dorsey of New Jersey, New York, Gotham FC, Emily Fox, Racing Louisville FC, Naomi Girma, San Diego Wave FC, Sofia Huerta of OL Rain, Kelly O'Hara, Washington Spirit, and Emily Sonnet, Washington Spirit. For the midfielder courts, Lindsey Horan, Portland Thorns FC, Jalen Howell, Racing Louisville FC, Rose Lavelle, all rain, Christy Mewis, New Jersey, New York, Gotham FC, <laughs> Samantha Mewis, Kansas City Current, Ashley Sanchez, Washington Spirit, and Andy Sullivan, Washington Spirit. And for the forward core, Ashley Hatch, Washington Spirit, Mallory Pugh, Chicago Red Stars, Margaret Purse, New Jersey, New York, Gotham FC, Trinity Rodman, Washington Spirit, Sophia Smith, Portland Thorns FC and Lynn Williams, Kansas City Current. I had to throw the clubs on there as well, Lisa, because we still have to get acclimated to some of the player movement uh, and uh, how they got attached to new to new clubs. But right to, right when this roster dropped, uh, there were obviously people taking a look to get their initial impression, uh, give their initial impressions of the roster. But when this one dropped, what were some of your main takeaways right when you saw it? Well, as you mentioned, listing the clubs, even you uh, reading through all those names and actually hearing them out loud for me, the, some of the first things that stand out to me are, holy cow, there's a lot of Washington Spirit players, seven in total being added to this list. Uh, they are the 2021 NWSL champions. Uh, it's no wonder that they had the most of any NWSL club players called into this national camp. So that's the first one. And then, of course, as you mentioned, getting acclimated to a little bit of this, like Christy Mewis at Gotham FC, excuse me, Sam Mewis, Lynn Williams at Kansas City Current. Uh, I'm still getting used to that. And also Margaret Purse being thrown into that forward uh, bunch. She's not with the defenders, but um, a, a few different things like definitely jumped out at first because we weren't really sure how this January camp was going to go. I think when you look at um, injuries that players have been through in the past, um, uh, players like Alyssa Nair, who was out since the semifinals in the Tokyo Olympics this summer, she is back on this roster. She's been out with a knee injury for many, many months. So to see her back on is fantastic. Also, Sam U.S. falling into that injury camp as well uh who who took some time off to recover and get strength again throughout her injuries is now back on this list but Sandra really it's it's the age and the new names and the youngness of this roster that is very striking I believe there are 10 players under the age of 25 which does leave off a lot of our veterans and and we'll dive into that but um when you first read these 25 names before any amendments were made uh is there anything in particular that really jumped off the page to you honestly the biggest thing for me was noticing how many of the names that were on this january camp roster also had time in those australia matches as well uh i think that probably jumped out for me 
the first. You're talking of this 25, 26 player roster. It was 17 players uh, who are now part of who were part of that Australia camp are now part of this January camp roster as well. And I really liked that. That was probably the part that jumped out to me the most. It's sort of a little bit of continuity, I think, mm -hmm. uh, in terms of head coach Vlako Andonovsky. And as he's looking ahead to 2023 and starting to get more engaged and more involved with the preparations for that World Cup tournament. So seeing so many of those players sort of kind of translate over and jump on over into 2022 i think it's very very important um and i know that maybe some folks are kind of looking at it and saying oh wow like seven players from <laughs> from washington spirit that that's a that that's a whole lot but you know what when you have the year that uh washington spirit players went out and had uh, i think that they're going to get a lot of attention right sort of going into uh the the, the following year or the following season and, and that's, okay. that's reflected on this like you know, right from the jump. It completely it is. And you mentioned the 17 that came uh, at the end of 2021, but also there's 10 that went to Tokyo on this roster. So, I mean, that's pretty balanced when you think of things. It's not like it's all brand new players. There are 10 o Olympians, most recent Olympians that won bronze in Tokyo also yeah. listed here. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, you know, and like with most, um, most roster uh, drops, there's, there's typically, uh, some media availability that comes adjacent to when, you know, the, the, those types of rosters are announced. And head coach Vlako Andonovsky met with the media to talk a little bit about this January camp roster. And there was just more uh, emphasis that was placed on the fact that, listen, there are no international friendlies that are going to be scheduled around this particular January camp, that it is going to just be sort of, uh, you know, just a private kind of, you know, USA versus USA type of mentality uh, to kind of just sort of utilize for further evaluation and really trying to extend opportunities still to players who unlikely get those opportunities as well. But it was really, you're starting to see maybe with this January camp roster starting to see maybe a little bit of a whittling down perhaps uh, because something that came out of those Australia camps from Andonovsky was that, listen, we got to see you in this type of environment, see how you react, see how you perform. And if this is not something that you show that you are able to sustain or, uh, you know, uh, participate in or be able to handle, that's going to let us know right, uh, right away if we want to like keep you, you know, uh, a part of the ongoing process. So to sort of see that transition uh, between those two, um, was was really nice to sort of see him connecting the dots in the media availability, but also within that as well, um, giving some some updates as well. You know, Lisa, you mentioned the return of Sam Mewis, the return of Alyssa Nair as some things uh, that stood out because these are players that had to navigate some some injury. And there were some injuries that really did take place, you know, within that really, uh, you know, the Olympic stretch of games that they were all participating in in the summer of 2021. And it was within that that uh, we also got an update on Julie Ertz. So I was able to participate in some of the media availability. And in being able to ask about Julie Ertz, Vlad Gondonovsky emphasized that there was this running theme of the importance of giving opportunity to sort of these younger players, potentially next gen players, uh, but also that Julie Ertz is someone who uh, has had to deal with injury throughout the duration of 20. 21 and because of that the where she's at with her injury is that it's it's behind her she's moving past it but now it's more about getting app acclimated to to fitness getting acclimated to game playing and the best way for her to do that is eventually get into uh get into you know involved trainings with club into market etc so uh that she was not going to be part of this current uh january camp but that they'll uh, evaluate her further along down the road because he mentioned that, uh, you know, a, a fully informed Julie Ertz is an asset to the United States women's national team. So she's uh, still in the process of making her, her return, but past the, the, the rough parts, I guess the early stages of, of what that injury would be. But um, something else that came out of that uh, media availability as well, Lisa was uh you know, one of the missing names is, was, was Katerina, uh, Katerina Macario. And uh, he also mentioned uh, sort of the, you know, her not being a part of this camp didn't really allude to anything else uh, that 
it was intended for her to be a part of the, this camp. But after conversations uh, between uh, both of the the coaches, you know, for, for United States and, uh, you know, for for Lyon, that it was best in her best interest to sort of stay on with the recent draw against Paris St. Germain. And it's a big game for her uh, to prepare for. So she's going to still be in camps there. And in light of that, that there was probably going to be an opening to maybe make an early adjustment to the roster. And as we like, we're reacting to that. We got additional news that there is going to be the return of Morgan Gatra to this uh, roster and uh, Morgan Weaver, another one of those players that had an impact uh, during those Australia friendlies. So a little bit of both, a little bit of like, hey, we're getting, we're going to grab an experienced player, but I'm also going to take one of these players that I'm sort of viewing and keeping in perspective and keeping in my plans uh, further along the line. So I think it's a uh, great to see um these two players come in and it's unfortunate that uh defender Amani Dorsey is going to make her exit from these January camps so after being named uh she's been ruled out due due to injury and that is why these two players are coming into the fold but uh I love to see that they they pitched it as uh, oh the two Morgans coming mm -hmm. into camps it was delightful we talked about our initial reaction and, and the fan base initial reaction was the absence of Katarina Macario because she is a, a young midfielder and a young superstar that has uh, done extremely well with Lyon in, in France and their team and really developing so well over there. And every time she is called in to the national team camp and, and she gets caps alongside players like uh, Andy Sullivan and Lindsey Horan, other superstar midfielders. We know that at the end of 2021, um, Black Wendonowski talked about maybe putting Kat Macario in the front line as a forward, as, as that number nine striker. So to not have her in this initial roster was concerning for a lot of people. But um, ultimately, the decision to kind of keep her playing with club probably benefits her a little bit in, in her development because uh, Black Wendonowski knows that Katarina Macario is going to be part of his team moving forward. So he doesn't really need to evaluate her anymore. And now this opens up another spot for a, another player to come in. So initial roster was at 25. Amani Dorsey, a defender for Gotham, being injured. That took it back down to 24 players. And then adding the two Morgans in Morgan Weaver and Morgan Gattral brought it up to 26. So now they're at 26 heading into this camp. And we discussed it a little bit. It's going to be a big focus on team development and team competition because there are no international friendlies during this camp, which in the past there have been an opportunity to play against other teams and other units, uh, but but this time it's not. So the competition will be extremely, extremely high, and I can guarantee you that those players that just got called in, Morgan Weaver and Morgan Gattral, they're going to make the most of it. I mean, I think they have to, and, and we'll dive into a little bit of – them uh, that we're seeing because they are part of those really big call-ups.